to another episode of Monty and the Pharaoh brought to you at Village Connection Radio every Thursday from 8.05 to 9 p.m. I am Monty. This is the infamous Jimmy Farrow. So, coming off the week, we've got a special guest. Yeah. Ring of Honor star, Beretta. Six foot two, two hundred pound, hailing from Tampa Bay, Florida. Welcome to Monty and the Pharaoh. Hey guys, thanks for having me. Thanks. You got it. Am I, am I in like a little box in the corner of the screen or something? That's what's going on. Nice. He's I would want to be in a little box. box. You're in a box. In a it's box. probably not the first time, right? With that big dog next to him in a little box. What about the dog? <laughs> so, Beretta, check it out. Uh, born and raised in Mount Sinai, New York. Uh, you're a paisan from Long Island. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um. Shit, I don't really know what to say about it. I, I, I was, uh, I moved to Mount Sinai when I was in third grade. Before that, I was in Huntington, New York, and uh, I don't know. I just lived there. I don't really. Yeah, well, that makes that it was makes fine. You that was all I knew. It was, it was fine, you know. Do you miss it? Um, he's got to think no. about it. No, no, I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> so I'm happy wherever I am, you know. But uh. 
man, my dog is playing with this stupid ball. It's really loud. <laughs> That's too funny. I was really trying to get him to be on my lap when the show started. So you guys probably saw me on camera just like talking to the ground for a long time. <laughs> Didn't work out. Well, we're, we're, we're looking right at you now. So it's like you're in studio anyway. So, so let the dog hang out with you. There he is. Right, hey, Buck, come here. Let's see him. He's... Now he won't come. No. <laughs> You gotta send him for professional so, training. So, dude, I, I gotta tell you, when we announced you were coming on the show, man, the fans were going crazy. We gotta thank you, really. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Thanks, thanks for having me, guys. You got it. I wanted to ask you, Trent, um, what got you into pro wrestling? Was it a, a certain circumstance, or was it a person who got you into wrestling? How old were you? Where did it all start? Um, it's gonna be. I'm gonna make this a weird story, but uh, okay. Do you guys remember the first Ninja Turtle movie? Yeah. Remember when Raphael, like, fell through the ceiling and he was, like, hurt the whole movie? Yeah. I think, like, subconsciously, the uh, the sympathy that Raphael had, like, when I saw wrestling, like, I mixed that together in my head. Because Raphael was kind of what the whole movie was about, him being hurt, and he finally makes a comeback. And uh, I remember being real, like, I don't know, something about that really drew me in. And then when I saw wrestling when I was nine years old, it was Shawn Michaels, and he was getting beat up just like Raphael. So, uh, at first, Shawn Michaels was my guy. Okay. And then later, it was uh, Mick Foley and Jeff Hardy. It was mostly guys that got beat up a lot. Really? Okay. Foley, Jeff Hardy, Shawn. I mean, there was I liked a lot of guys, but those were, like, probably my main three. So, how do you get turned on to wrestling? Like, how do you discover wrestling? Um, I remember knowing about it. Like, I had an Ultimate Warrior backpack. Nice. But I wasn't super into wrestling. I just, like, I knew the Ultimate Warrior was cool. Right. And then uh, we were having a sleepover when I was, like, in third grade. And my uh, my friends put on Raw. And it was, I think it was, like, right after. I don't know if you guys remember the pay-per-view with, in 96. It was, uh, like, Brett and The Undertaker in a cage match. No, Brett and Diesel in a cage match. Undertaker came through the ring. Okay. It was the Raw after that, so it was the build-up to WrestleMania 12. Okay. So that's when I started really getting into wrestling. And then my favorite already was Shawn, and then my first pay-per-view was watching Shawn do the Iron Man and win the championship. And uh, ever since then, I've been all in on wrestling pretty much. So, so at what point do you break the news to your family that you want to become a professional wrestler? I don't remember, really. I, I have a memory of... Uh, telling my mom like mom it's gonna be so easy i only have to work <laughs> one day a week oh my god because oh bra was only on once a week and uh and it's fake and it doesn't hurt so like i'll be fine <laughs> so uh, i don't i remember being really into it i would watch i mean we would like basement wrestle that was our version of backyard wrestling then i backyard wrestled after that but i, I don't remember exactly when i decided like this is what i want to do but i knew like by the time i was probably 11 i knew i i wanted to do it okay maybe before that i, I don't know how I, I really i can't remember anything uh, how far how far into your career were you before your family realized hey that stuff hurts and you're not doing it once a week <laughs> <laughs> um i think they kind of as far as getting hurt goes before i got had like before i got seriously injured the first time and needed surgery they were kind of they weren't worried at all, but after I finally got hurt for right. real, they were like, "Oh shit!" And uh, they don't enjoy watching me wrestle as much anymore because they know there's a chance I'm gonna get hurt. And, and what, uh, what was the extent of the injuries regarding that particular time? Uh, that was my first injury in 2012. I tore my tricep. Mm. Oh, and actually, before that, I separated my shoulder. But uh, the tricep was the first one that needed uh, surgery. Gotcha. Uh, you were trained by Mikey Whipwreck. How did that come about, you know, your coming to New York Wrestling Connection? Um, when I, actually, when I started there, it was just called Critical Mass, and a guy named John Curse was in charge of the school. Okay. And uh, Mikey wasn't there yet. So I think I was there for maybe two years before Mikey showed up. But uh, I, my mom was great, and she, I was 15 years old when I started training. And uh, wow. I couldn't drive, and the school was an hour away. Really? And every Sunday, she would drive me an hour and then go hang out with my grandma and then drive me back. So, like, I really owe it to my parents for supporting my career the whole way through. That, that, that's got to uh, be. was great. That's yeah. got to count Mike for a lot. Great. Everyone was great. 
That's got to count for a lot, having the backing of the family, because I've heard some stories where that's not mm -hmm. necessarily the case, so that's great. Yeah. Are you guys hearing that noise? I'm getting texts. I forgot to. Uh... No, you're all no, good. No, we're cool on you're our good. end. Everything's good okay. on our end. You got any stories uh, about Mikey Whipwreck you want to share? Any cool training stories? Uh, I wish I got to know him better, because when I was there, I was just like a little kid. Okay. So, like, I don't have any cool stories of going out with Mikey. I was just... And my memory sucks, too. Well, how old were you when you started? Well, how old were you with your first match at New York Wrestling Connection? How old were you? Um, I did a battle royal when I was 15. Wow. And, uh, wow. Well, and then they wanted to sneak me in, but yeah, the legal limit, the legal whatever the word is for, the legal whatever, you got to be 18 to wrestle right. in New York. Right. So they wanted to sneak me in, but there was another kid in the company that was like also 15 or 16. And they didn't want to put him on the show, so they they were like, "Ah, oh, his mom's gonna complain if we just put you on, so we can't put you on." Oh. So uh, I would like get on. A, I would leave. I'd leave my bike in the woods, and I'd have to leave school early, <laughs> ride my bike to the train station, and then take a train to uh, Hicksville, and then get driven to New Jersey by my buddies to wrestle in New Jersey because wasn't eighteen to wrestle what, in New what York. What neck of the woods were you leaving your bike in the woods? By the way, what town was that that it never got That's stolen? It was Mount Sinai. It was just like kind of on school property too. And Mount Sinai, nobody stealing anything. So okay, okay. It was well hidden anyway, somewhat. When New York Wrestling Connection was all said and done with, you were uh, put in their Hall of Fame. How did that feel? That was cool. Uh, I'm kind of weird where I don't want to celebrate my career too much. Right, right. Where I, especially it's not over. I I feel sure. like whatever I'm gonna do, it's just getting started now. Sure. Sure. So uh, it was it was great to be recognized by all those guys, but at, at the same time, I'm like, I got more to do. I'm not done yet. Oh hell yeah, hell yeah. But, I mean, it's and, definitely cool. After uh, New York Wrestling Connection, you uh, you quickly quickly got called up to the big time. Uh, were you all of 20 years old at that point with the WWE calling you up? And can you explain like you know when you got the call, how it went down, what your uh, feelings were? I think I had just turned 20 and I, I uh, threw Mikey, Mikey threw Tommy Dreamer. Dreamer was in charge of like booking extras and stuff like that. I got booked as an extra and uh, I got booked a few times in 2007 and I would just be in the ring all as whenever I could, I'd be in the ring wrestling whoever. And uh, I eventually, they kind of got to know me. I did some, I got like squashed by Mark Henry one time on TV and mm -hmm. uh did a couple other squash matches, and then one day Johnny Ace just brought me in his office, and he pretty much told me uh, we want to have you move to uh, Florida. And that's that's how I won. He's, I had to finish. Uh, I was in Suffolk Community College. I had to finish that out. He said, and then come work for me. It was early 2008. I started. What was it like working with Mark Henry? The immenseness of him. Was that the first time you ever you know grappled with somebody of that size and strength? <laughs> Probably, yeah. I was always, I mean, since I started when I was 15, I was always used to being a smaller guy. Mm -hmm. But uh, Mark Henry was a giant man. And he was actually, like, he was such a pro. Like, he was way lighter and easier to work with with a lot of the guys in, on the NYWC Indies. Like, so he took, it, good care, he, easy, yeah. he, he took good care of you then in the ring. He was a professional all the way through. Yeah. Awesome. So you, you know you hear about all the bullying when you get into when you get into the WWE. Did you uh, face any kind of bullying or being the newbie? Did you get a lot of gags played on you, anything like that? No, not really at all. Well, because I went to FCW first, and uh, we were all we were all new pretty much. There was no I can't even think of a guy in the locker. There was no like there was no like top indie guy that was in, that got pulled out of the indies to FCW. Actually, Colt Cabana was there. But no, everyone was super cool, and I I didn't really face any bullying at all. Who was who was the booker at FCW at that time? Um, there was a couple, I guess. It was Doctor Tom, Steve Kern, and uh, Dusty Rhodes. Also, he was the one booking. I think Dusty mostly booked TV, and uh, maybe Doc booked the house shows. How, how did you find Dusty? How was your relationship with Dusty? Did he take you under your wing, give you a little advice or anything like that? I've heard so many great stories about him as a father figure to wrestlers. It was, uh, he did take me. No, he didn't really take me under his wing. When I first went there, it, was, it wasn't the same setup that it is now where there was a, pro, a Dusty promo class or anything like that. It was kind of like some guys would work on promos with Dusty, some guys wouldn't. 
Uh, oh shit, I can't remember. He, he was really cool. He was always funny, and he would always like tell great stories to everyone. Uh, we actually got to wrestle him. His last match was against uh, the Dude Busters. It was D- Goldust, Cody, and uh, Dusty against me, Hawkins, and uh, Croft. Wow. And that, was, that was awesome, wrestling Dusty. It was unreal. So, so at what point do you like you stop becoming like a fan, and then you just become one of the boys? Ooh, I mean, I'm still a fan. Awesome. I was hoping you were going to say that. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, but uh, I don't know when. You... It gets to be different. Where like, if I was 20 years old and I was wrestling like a big name guy, I would be like starstruck that I'm wrestling this guy, or real nervous to be wrestling him, but at, at a certain point, it gets to be like, no, this is what I do. I'm wrestling right. it, it whatever passes. big name guy. This mm-hmm. is just, it's regular. Right. What was it like getting your first paycheck at FCW compared to the independent days? Were you like, oh my God, was it that much of a difference? If we, if we can ask. Um, yeah, that's no problem asking. Um, it wasn't well, you know, much. if you're okay with no problem, how much did you make? Oh, God. Because uh, uh, that's now, probably the most important now, question give, in my book. If I can give a disclaimer, even even Greg Valentine answered us a couple of weeks ago on this one. So uh, <laughs> the, the pressure is on now, Trent. It wasn't a lot at first at all. But to me, I was 20 years old. And uh, before that, I never even had a full-time job because I was going to school, too. And I was a spoiled white kid. <laughs> So, uh, from Long Island. From Long Island, no yeah. less. And I live with my parents, so like I w- they started me at five hundred dollars a week, and uh, I can almost do the math what well, that comes out to a year. But uh, <laughs> I thought that was great. And then like that the, year, like I the, ended up needing my parents to help me pay taxes because okay. I spent too much money because oh, I geez. didn't know how to be an adult. I still don't. But uh, <laughs> by the way, by the way, the owner of uh, Village Connection says thirty five thousand dollars, forty five thousand, twenty five. Okay, I got how it wrong. Jimbo know his yeah, salary. Yeah, what Small. is it? I, I never 25K. Know Hold on, he's thinking. 56 weeks or 52? 52. 52. I think. I'm an idiot. I think. Okay, got it. <laughs> don't, don't feel bad. I'm, I'm wondering myself. There's mass confusion going on yeah, right now. No connection. Mass confusion. How about when you got called up to ECW with the Dude Busters? Did you like that gimmick? I did, but it was a little bit different the way we did it in FCW. It was weird to have... Uh, it was weird to have people writing promos for us. I know that's like a common thing that everybody wants to complain about is the writers. Okay. It's not that the, it was just like they they didn't really know what we were. I don't I don't even know what the dude busters were actually, but uh, so I wouldn't know how to write a promo for us either. But uh, they want there were I remember like something like they wanted us to say something like we were video game guys to everyone. That's all they knew like internet video game. That's what you are. And I was like, all right. <laughs> But uh, they, it was some promo, like, they wanted us to say something like, we're going to give you Pac-Man fever. And that that was a real line they wanted. And I was just like, I can't do that. <laughs> Pac-Man <laughs> fever. Yeah. Wow. No, but, wonder, uh, no wonder you got ticked was, off. It was, Ugh, yeah. It was bad. a dream come true to be on the somewhat main roster. But uh, sure. I, I could have handled myself better, too. Like, I was a young kid. I didn't know what I was doing. I think I was maybe 22. So uh, were you I was fa- not ready to be in WWE. Were at you that familiar age at with all. the ECW product? That you know the, the WWE ECW version is not the real ECW. You know, forgive me, but that's how I feel about that. Were you familiar with the ECW product when you got involved in the in the WWE version of it? Oh yeah, definitely. I was never a full on ECW fan because I was so young, and it came on came on MSG channel at yes. like one yes. one a.m. on Saturday. Yes, I think. yes, and. I, I st- like we would have sleepovers and we would stay up and watch it sometimes. And my friends would tell my like older friends would tell me about how cool it was. But uh, it was hard to keep up with because it was on so late. And then the TV wasn't always great. It, sometimes it was like just weird ass matches all cut together. And, and uh, no, I wish I, I followed it more. But I definitely knew of ECW and I knew the WWE version wasn't ECW. Nobody. Nobody thought it was, I don't think. Well, right. let, let's go back to FCW a little bit, right? So you're a young man making 500 bucks a week, right? You're living life. Is that what he's making? I don't uh, remember him saying that. That's what he just said. <laughs> Is that Jesus, what he said? he's got worse memory than you, dude. Well, you know, I'm trying to remember how many weeks there are in a year. Leave me alone. So, <laughs> so give, me, give, me a, give me a day in the life of an FCW wrestler. I'm sure you got some ring rats hanging around. You're sporting that Ultimate Warrior uh, backpack. <laughs> 
<laughs> what what are some of the what are some of the hook, hookups like? There was none. What? No, nobody nobody really knew who FCW was in town. Uh, it was just going to practice and then sometimes on the weekends driving uh, three or four hours and doing a show in a small little town and then driving back. It was no like we weren't like real cool famous guys or anything. I was twenty years old. Yeah, but you didn't have like some roadies like just following you guys around. Man, I was 20 years old. I was too nervous to even talk to girls back then. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, Trent, some of your big matches, uh, I, saw, I was even watching one the other night, was with uh, Drew McIntyre. Did you think there was anything special about him considering how he's come along over the years, especially recently with the WWE? I always thought he was really good. Uh, he started to really, as soon as he left, he started to really get something going with him. And, uh, I think that getting fired really like got him fired up, and it made him uh, add a whole new element to to who he is in the ring. He was always great, but uh, he's just gotten better and better. And that's how everyone is. Like he shouldn't have been there when he was. I think he was maybe twenty two or something when he started. It's just too young. It, it takes it takes like at least ten years for most guys, I think, to really figure out what you're doing in the ring. And uh, no, he's great though. Drew's awesome. Did you uh did you meet any of the old timers uh, around while you were there in the WWE? Did you run across any of the old guys? You talked about Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Did you possibly run across Marty Jannetty by any chance? I I uh, I did a seminar with Marty, I think, in NYWC before what, then. Was he coherent? Yeah, he was fine. Wow, uh, you're a lucky man, Trent Barretta. <laughs> you're a lucky man. You're a lucky man. We'd like to say the yes. same. Uh, Marty's a sweetheart. Uh, when you got moved to NXT, were, were you angry? You relieved? Can you describe how you felt being moved to NXT in its early days? And did you have any idea that NXT would turn out to be what it is today? No, I had no idea. I was I was upset because I got hurt, and then next thing I knew, I was in NXT. Okay. Did but you like feel you were back, being, Did you no, feel you were I, being I, punished? Um. Because Vince has got this thing about getting hurt, from what I you know, from what I gather, from what I've seen. You know? I, I didn't think I mattered. I didn't matter enough for Vince to even. Vince probably didn't even realize I was hurt or I was pulled off the road and sent to, to NXT. So I don't think it was a Vince thing. I think it was just like there was a bunch of guys just kind of floating around on, on at TV every week with no direction. And uh, we weren't over or anything. So right. it made sense to put us in NXT. So, so who and did I was you, pissed. But So who did you yeah. work with directly? Johnny Ace most of the time? Johnny was my guy, yeah. Uh, Johnny was the one that hired me, and then... Uh, so was he like, hey, Trent, I can't even do the voice. Yeah, how do you do the voice? I, I'm not can, doing it. Can you do it? Come on, come on. <laughs> I can't do voices, guys. You got it. Trent, come over here, let's talk. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that was that's terrible. That's Johnny Ace. It was a good try. That's All not right. even Johnny Close. <laughs> what the heck is that? Oh, my Lord. Trent, I got to ask you, Pro Wrestling Gorilla, New Japan, Ring of Honor, you know, what, are, what were these moves like for you, and what's the the difference in the companies i know every company's got a different wrestling approach so what was it like for you to go from the wwe approach to pwg which specializes in so much bizarreness and the comedy and the high spots and and then there's new japan where they physically beat the shit out of each other and then you got ring of honor which is a wonderful combination of the two you know so what was it like you know changing with all of these different companies as you went to each one um I feel like it's not really the company. It's just it's just figuring out what the crowd is going to be into that night. And I guess different companies have different kind of crowds. Do you have a but, particular uh, company that's your favorite crowd? Because I've noticed in New Japan, I have never seen such a respectful wrestling crowd. I love the Japanese fans. Maybe it's just me, but they seem to be so attentive and so respectful of the sport. The sport. And I love that. But I was just curious if you had a preference you know, I don't want to put you on the spot here because then the Ring of Honor fans would be like, you like the other guys, boo! But uh, what's your take? It's not really uh, the companies. It's the buildings have different kinds of fans. Nice. So, like, if you wrestle in the ECW arena, you know what kind of crowd it's going to be. Cork and Hall in Japan is always – it's almost like an American indie crowd. It's not the respectful Japanese crowd that you would get on, like, a Japanese country town. So it's really the buildings and the, the location you're in. That's a different kind of fans. But uh, 
Those are some of my favorite arenas. PWG, Merceda. I haven't done the new PWG building yet. Uh, that's one of my favorites. ECW Arena. Mm. Definitely Cork and Hall. Uh, there's a sumo arena, Ryugoku Sumo Hall in uh, Tokyo. Osaka, Japan. Uh, those are some of my favorites. And th- those crowds aren't... No, those crowds are just great. I don't know. What, I don't know what was it like stepping out at Wrestle Kingdom, and I know you've been in more than one. What was it like when you got in front of a crowd that size? It was cool, but at the same time, uh, I want to be doing more on the shows. I don't want to be in a tag, a junior tag match, or, or a multi man match, or a gauntlet match. I want to be doing a big singles match. So for me, I, it's it's fun. It's really cool, but I. I I'm striving for bigger things than that. You sure. know? Well, you know, I read that uh, sure. last year, uh, number 91 in the PWI 500. Uh, what do you think about that? I mean, that's incredible. You're a mover and a shaker at this point. I had no idea I was 91. That's cool. Really? Wow. I mean, for that's us, we're, we're old school wrestling fans. <laughs> yeah. PWI was where, we you are. know, that's where we used to get our information. You know, we we're Stone Age, so for us, reading that's pretty, <laughs> yeah, pretty it's, impressive. It starts for us with Bruno San Martino, so... <laughs> You know. I must have known at some point that it was 91 but because I, I feel like I check at least every year, but I honestly forgot but, or it got concussioned out of my brain or something. I don't know. Well, let me ask you this. How many concussions have you received? Wow. Um, really big, serious ones, like only one. But only it's one. like, uh, I, I don't know if I should answer this because then one day maybe I won't be able to work somewhere because it'll be like, right. well, the, don't, this the, guy has no. The don't not, don't answer terrible. I think I just actually have a bad memory to begin with, but we get rocked in the head a lot. Yep. Uh, can you tell me what? Your, can you tell me what your training regimen's like? Uh, right now, I I get I tore my bicep in, and my chest in mm. February, and it's pretty much just go to the gym every every day. And, and what, lift, lift. What's your diet workout. like? Trying to keep in shape. Like what's what's a usual uh, day in the life of? Uh, uh, I'm doing a real weird diet right now, I guess, where – you know about the intermittent fasting stuff? No. <laughs> uh, Do I look like I know anything not... about fasting? Uh, I don't no. know if you can see me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not exciting for anyone to hear. It's just like you uh, you spend a certain time, amount of time every day not eating and then a short – not that short of a window, maybe – I can't do the math right now. A short window of actually eating and then more time not eating. So it's just kind of wake up. I'll wake up. It's not that I wake up early, but my first meal is at usually like 7 p.m. Wow. But I'm waking up at noon, so it's not terrible. Right. Okay. I have to ask you, I'm a huge fan of Rapungi Vice. Uh, You and Rocky Romero, how did this come about? Because to me, this this tag team was fantastic. I think you held the, uh, the tag titles four different times, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you guys are you guys are great together. How did this all come about? Um, I had done New Japan uh, when I got fired from WWF. They had me do uh, a Super Junior tournament, and like it, I did fine, I did great. But the the roster was so packed, there was no place to keep me to keep me on the roster. It was just all right, you did good, and then uh, whatever. But then it was like maybe a year and a half after that. Mm-hmm. Rocky's old partner, Alex Kozlov, was uh, taking time off from wrestling. They wanted a new partner for Rocky, and New Japan just picked me. How, was, how do you find Rocky as a person? Uh, you guys jive well together? Has he been a mentor of sorts, or, you know, what's the what's the uh, relationship like? He's like he's one of the nicest dudes I've ever met in my life. Uh, and he's also, he's a Japan, I call him my Japan dad, because... He's, his first tour of Japan was like in 2000 or something like that. So he's been there so many times and he knows all the ins and outs and like the cultural things and where where the gym is and all that. So like I just, for a while, I was just blindly just following Rocky around and we worked out fine. Were you able to pick up on the language at all over in Japan? Very little. Yeah, very little. I find that very intimidating. So I was just curious because I, I noticed that Rocky speaks it fluidly. No, he has little catchphrases that he oh, says. Is that what that is? Because he comes across like he know he knows the language, no problem. No, not at all. Okay, the only, the only guy that I've met that that can speak full Japanese, uh, 
and isn't from Japan is Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega. Excellent. So let me go back. We're going to cover Omega in a minute. I want to go back, oh, yeah. back to the WWE. So uh, not to make this sad, but, you know, here's your dream. You work in WWE, and they release you. What, what are you feeling at that point? Are you feeling like, I'm done with this? Like, give, give me your thoughts. What's your feelings? You, you mentioned uh, earlier you had, you had a bad attitude when you got let go or something. I mean, what, what, what was going on in your head at the time? Was it just you were very young? I mean. Yeah, no, I was young, and uh, – I was frustrated being there because it was like maybe once a week I'd be getting a match on TV that was possibly 10 minutes or shorter. And I, I wanted, I knew that I needed to go out and, and do more wrestling. Like it's really hard to figure out what works for you. If you're only wrestling maybe 10 minutes a, a week on, on TV in front of those big crowds. So like I was honestly like, it sounds like a, a fake thing to say to sound cool, but I was excited to be out of WWE and like to be able to do whatever I wanted on the Indies and be able to have matches that go 30 minutes and, and figure out what works in a 30 minute match. Cause I, I didn't have that experience at all. And I knew I didn't have it and I, I wanted it. So I, uh, I didn't look at it as uh, like my dreams were crushed. It was just, I'm still a wrestler and I'm still going to wrestle. So that's what I did. Well, you looked at it the right way because I think you've done fantastic since. It's their mistake. That's how I look at that. Uh, I was a baby. I think they did the right thing, honestly. Okay. Okay. But well, thanks. You got it. No problem. You know, the, the Pharaoh was uh, all up in the hammer shit a couple episodes what? ago. Now he's up in your shit. It's all good. Stop it. They always call me a sucker. Uh, what is this? Classic Pharaoh, man. Yeah. That's right. I'm a Pharaoh head. All right, so tell, right. tell us a little about your uh, match with Kenny Omega and your, your relationship with Kenny Omega. Kenny's cool. Kenny's great. I mean, uh, I love the match. I wish we had a little bit more time. Uh, I was happy with everything that happened. It was, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to put it into words. It was, uh, it was nerve-wracking to be in a match with him, just because, not because like he's scary or anything, just because... Every match he has is is a match that everybody goes wild about. So there's a lot of pressure when you're wrestling, and especially well, this is my first pretty well. I had one New Japan heavy single heavyweight singles before that, but it was my first like big New Japan match. So well, I knew if I if I didn't do well, that could change my whole career. I could be right. doing nothing forever. So uh, oh, you stepped up to the plate. I I remember uh, watching that match. I think that was a 33 minute match, if I'm not mistaken. That was a that was a great match. Was I wanted to ask you how your back is, by the way, because you took more back bumps in that match <laughs> than I think I've seen anybody take. You took and three different times in that match, you came within a hair of taking that title off Kenny Omega. How excited were you when they came to you with this match? Because this is this was huge, and this is exactly what you want. It's mostly nerve wracking. I they came. I knew that match was happening before it was even announced that I was a heavyweight. Excuse me. So I knew for months in advance. So that made it even more nerve wracking because right. for months I'm thinking about this one, this one twenty minute match. You know, I'm thinking about twenty minutes for months. So when it actually, I was just super relieved to have it done with. Actually, a lot of times wrestling's like that where. You, it's so much pressure to do the big match. It's just you can't wait for it to finally be over and like, oh, okay, I did great. Things are cool. What's next? Ring of Honor, Madison Square Garden, WrestleMania week. Have you had the opportunity to wrestle in MSG? And, and what's your take on Ring of Honor getting the MSG booking? I think it's great. I've never wrestled there. I think I'm excited about it. Hopefully I'm on the show. I, I want to wrestle there, of course. I think it's good for the company. It's good for wrestling. I don't know. That's it. That's all I got to say. No, I hear you. Do you hope to be back in the WWE someday? And do you think that Ring of Honor in New Japan can make a run? To compete and, with and WWE? Yeah. Can can they make a run at Vince Ring of Honor in New Japan? I don't know. I have no idea. That's fair. Uh, as far as going back, it would depend. Like, I don't want to. I don't want to go back there and do what I did last time nothing you know uh it would it would just depend on the the situation right now i'm completely happy not being there i have more i've had more fun after wwe than i did right the rest of my career and every there's a buzz on the indies there's a buzz in wrestling right now 
where yeah. you don't need to be in WWE. The Bucks, the Young Bucks, and Kenny, and so many guys are proving that you can make a great living. Yeah, there's, there's definitely there. huge. There's definitely a huge buzz. Um, so the old schoolers, right? They would always want to protect their brand. It wasn't called a brand at that time. So nowadays. Do you feel like you have to protect your brand? Because you are working the indies. You are working, you know, and you've got to keep a reputation. Is it difficult to do the job? Uh, like, how does that work? Um, I look at it different, like, where uh, uh, when I take bookings, I try to make sure that I'm being given a match that if, if somebody's never seen me before, they would be able to be impressed with what I did. I don't want to go work in like some little town against like in a, and some weird like six man gauntlet bullshit cruiserweight match or something because then like it doesn't help me at all I, I, I don't care about losing or anything like that I just want to be able to have I want to be able to have the best match of that night every night so if I'm put in a situation I just won't I won't put myself in a situation where I think it's not going to be a good match Tell us about your relationship with the Young Bucks, and what's this about you being the third member of the Young Bucks? You're just uh, Matt Jackson in disguise or something like that? What, what, what? <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea. Bucks are great. They're my good buddies. But uh, uh, a few Japanese fans have thought I'm Matt Jackson or Matt Jackson with me. I mean, so white, <laughs> oh, we, all look alike? we all look alike, right? Oh I mean, we're, we are white dudes with fucking orange spray tanned faces and sideburns and a ponytail. <laughs> You must be from There's not many of those, so. Unbelievable. Any shot of you? Were you ever offered a, a chance to be in the Bullet Club, considering uh, your uh, similarity to uh, the Young Bucks? No, I think it would make me not eligible. Well, I'm too similar. I'm not even that similar to him. I just no, look like that. But no, uh, no, it never came up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. The Young Bucks. <laughs> Do you see, uh, what's your take on the all-in event with Cody Rhodes? And this is pretty ballsy, what they're pulling off here. Do you do you think that this can uh, turn into something even bigger as they continue to go? Because this all-in event has uh, sold out. Yeah, I mean, it's great. It's really good for wrestling. It proves how popular those guys are. Uh... What's your take on Cody? Because if anybody has shown Vince McMahon, oops, you've made a mistake, I, I think... Uh, I think Cody's pretty pretty much the poster boy right now. Yeah, I mean, no, he's doing great, but he was another guy that like sometimes when you're there, you you need to get out of there to to just be free and do whatever you want. And Cody's he's of course done he's done so much better than he was to me in WWE. He's improved in every aspect, his character, his wrestling. Uh, so I don't I don't know know if you can say like that was a mistake. It's just like. I don't know. I can't think of the words to say, but I think I'm almost making sense. Well, no, you're making <laughs> sense. You, you, look, you got you. You seem to have a passion. You care about you care about the sport more than you know maybe making major cash. I know you want to make major cash, but it seems like you you care about your profession and you care about you know where it goes and you want to make a mark instead of just you know. Yeah. And that's a pretty impressive uh, you know skill or trait. You know, so that's pretty impressive. He gives it Thank damn. You. That works. Trent, I wanted to ask you, what do you feel is there anything in wrestling right now that you would like to change? Something about it that bothers you, especially Vince's product. Do you watch Vince's product? Um Yeah, once in a while. You find um, anything about it that pisses you off, or is there anything that you feel that they should adjust? And what's your take on promos? Because to me, you shine in the ring, but I don't recall too many promos with you. Are you are you promo shy, or is this something that that's just not been offered to you? It just kind of hasn't been offered. I do I do a lot of New okay. Japan post match promos, but like as far as like WWE, there was no like big in ring promo segments or anything like that. Right. I don't yeah. know, but uh, as far as changing, I I don't I have no idea how to run a billion dollar company, so like I can't. Right. I have no idea what to change. That's fair. I have to ask you while I have you, uh, Toro Yano. Uh, do you have? I love this guy. I wanted to ask you if you have any uh, stories you could tell us about him because he's one of my favorite guys in New Japan. There's something about this guy. I find him hol- hilarious. He's incredibly entertaining, and his shtick is fantastic. So, um, no, he's great. He's kind of 
quiet in real life. Really? Yeah. How a little about, bit. Compare him to Ishii, because if I do, I do believe you held the never open weight six man tag titles with Ishii and, and Yano. And uh, what is Ishii yeah. like compared to uh, Toro in real life? Because Ishii, if you tell me he's hilarious and outgoing, I'm going to be really confused. <laughs> no, Ishii's also kind of quiet. Okay. I mean, so the, all the, the the chaos guys make Ishii always. He's always the butt of the joke. The chaos, the Japanese guys in our chaos group. Uh, it's hard to describe. It's hard to describe these guys. Right. Uh, they're both cool, though. Are you are you able to talk with them much, considering the language barrier? Uh, yeah, there's a barrier, of course, but uh, we spend a lot of time. Like chaos, as a group, goes out to uh, a lot of dinners after the shows and stuff like that. And every night we're pretty much when it's house shows we're in some form it's like a six man or eight man tag where I'm working with those guys on my team every night so I'm I'm around them a lot and they they all speak more English than we can speak Japanese. Okay, what what's your take on Okada and do you ever see him being wooed by Vince? Oh, I think Okada's awesome. He's one of my favorite guys to watch. He's fucking weird in real life. He's weird? Tell us tell us what makes him weird. I feel like if Okada didn't... If Okada was an American that spoke perfect English, me, him, and Chuck Taylor would be like best buddies. Okay. Like, we're already friends, but he fits in with my group of friends. And uh, I don't know. He's a weird dude. Tell us about uh, your, your time as uh, the best friends with Chuck. What do I say about him? Because that's, that's, that's another thing that's though. over. What's up? That's that's very over, you and Chuck. Yeah, it's been fun. Uh, it was great to go and do the last year we did the, uh, the New Japan Heavyweight Tag Tournament. And that was Chuck's first time in New Japan. And uh, it went great, I thought. We had a lot of fun. And uh, hopefully we'll be doing that again this year. We'll see. Since you were behind the scenes at the time, I have to ask you, what was the buzz like in the locker room when word got out that Nakamura was coming to Vince, was coming to America? And what was your, uh, did you have any relationship with Nakamura? What was he like behind the scenes? He, he's like, uh, he's like what you would expect him to be like. He's a weirdo artist guy. He's always super cool. And he was in chaos with us, so uh, we spent a lot of time at dinners and stuff like that with him. Uh, it wasn't just Nakamura. It was, uh, I don't know which Wrestle Kingdom, but it, whatever year it was, it was all in one day. Uh, we found out that Shin, Shinsuke, uh, Carl Anderson, Gallows, and AJ mm -hmm. Styles were, were all leaving. Wasn't that the night after Wrestle Kingdom, basically? It was like... Yeah, uh, we I heard about it the same night as Wrestle Kingdom. I, I, uh, I can't remember which one it was. I think it was was it Okada Tanahashi was the main. Maybe I, it doesn't matter which one it was, but it was like one of the Bucks told me like this is what's going on. They they pulled me aside. It was like still secret at the time, and uh, I wasn't worried for the company or anything like that. And then the next night they put Kenny. They moved Kenny up to heavyweight and like put him in AJ Styles' spot for the Bullet Club and uh, I, I, New Japan's got so many guys that a couple of guys leaving is not really going to affect us. But uh, I was sad to see my friends leave mostly. Sure. After your match with Kenny and which was an incredible match, were the bookers pleased with you? And did you were you hoping to get an, you know more one on ones? Because uh, it seemed to me the next logical move would be for you to get an individual title of some kind over there. Were they were they pleased with your performance? As far as I know, yeah. And uh, I don't know what 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 I what I have done next because I we did Wrestle Kingdom after that. It was pretty much we did the Kenny match, and then it was a tag a heavyweight tag team tournament. And then it was Wrestle Kingdom, and then I got hurt. So I don't know where I would have been right now if I didn't get hurt. Uh, so, yeah, that was a bummer because things were like finally after 15 years or whatever, I was really starting to pick up career-wise, and then uh, my arm and the chest exploded. Right. So that, that sucked. Yeah. But I don't, uh, I don't know if you answered me earlier. I did want to ask you one more time. How is your back? Is your back good? Because, like I said, I've, I've never seen somebody take so many backdrops. 
No, I got no back problems. He's really. got no back problems. Uh, it's a miracle. No, actually, nothing feels great. But uh, <laughs> my back hurts more like muscle-wise it will tighten up, but I think like my actual spine is, is okay. Right. Oh. How did, how did you feel about the timing with the ECW thing? Not to go backwards, but when you went to the ECW thing, it was like, all well, I think two months later they canceled it. We, it's, I guess sometimes timing is, can make a break or... Yeah, I don't want to make excuses, uh, but it sucked because ECW had ha happened and then that that got stopped two months after, I guess. I don't really remember. But uh, right after that, they started NXT and then they did the Nexus thing. So I was always like, shit, what, would I have been on that NXT and then would I have been part of the Nexus? Well, but I can't sit here and like they moved complain you about what didn't happen, you know? Right. They moved you to SmackDown after uh, ECW, right? Yeah, it's not like barely though. Like we, we were just floating around, and they were polite to to even use us. You know, I got it. So let me let me let me ask you this: When it's all said and done, what would you like your 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 uh, your career to look like? What what would you like people to say about you? How do you want to be remembered? Well, that's deep, man. Sorry, man, we're deep. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to. Let's just see. Let's just do it and see what happens instead of me predicting it, you know? Right. Of course, well, I want it to be all great, but uh, I feel like a dick to sit here and be like, I want to be the whatever, you know? I want to be the best, damn it. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you could go back in time, would you still take the same path in life and still be doing what you're doing? Wrestling? Yeah. Yeah, of course. There you go. Yeah. How do, you, how do you find the motivation after all these years? Do you find it easier to get up every morning and do what you do as you're getting older now? Or do you find it, uh, you know, I mean, how, what do you got, 12 years now since, uh, you, you know, you started uh, on the big time under your belt at this point? Uh, um, I think 10, it was 2008 I started. Oh, okay. Um, Does it get more difficult? Do, have you increased your training regimen since you first started? doesn't get i don't know the, the only thing that's difficult really is the travel and uh getting hurt once in a while but besides that i i don't know i look forward to wrestling i like doing it uh and my body's not that beat up now how many days out of the week uh currently do you find yourself on the road i just got back from injury i just right. got back this past weekend okay what was your, month, at, at so. your at your heaviest schedule in your career what would, how, how many days a week were you working um, that'd be like a, a, uh, like a three week tour of Japan where maybe we have one or two days off and then fly back to the States, uh, maybe be home for a day or two, maybe not even that, go do a ring of honor or an indie show that weekend, then come back home, maybe a day or two off, then fly back to Japan mm -hmm. would be like as busy as it gets, which is pretty much wrestle or travel almost every day. Right. You seem to, uh, from what I've read and from what I can sense, you seem to, even though tag team wrestling seems to have worked out really well for you, you seem to have a preference for singles matches. Is this true? Yeah, I like singles way more. Uh, that's it. <laughs> I like doing singles more. I've done so much tag, too, and I, I don't uh, I don't not like tag. I just really like singles. All right, so we got about a minute left. I want you just to tell the fans what they could expect when they, they see you live. Don't expect anything, man. <laughs> expect nothing. So then when I do something, you can be uh, impressed. There you go. That's there you it. Go. We really, this is that an hour already? 55 minutes? That's right. It's an hour up, man. Good job. How'd that feel, all right? Great job, guys. Trig, you're like a Harley going down the LIE, man. No sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Done. We did it. No sweat. I want to thank you. We really appreciate you coming uh, on the Monty and the Farrow show. Um, we really look forward to you, your future matches, and we do look forward to you in your return to the WWE because there's no doubt you'll uh, you'll make it. And if you're ever in town, we'd love to have you in studio, man. Really would. Thanks for having me, guys. You no, thank it. you. And Trent, in my book, you've already made it, brother. I love your work. Thanks for being on with us, man. And there's the foul kissing your ass. Yup. Fuck her up, baby. <laughs> All right, brother. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, All guys. right, man. Later. How do I turn this thing off? How do I turn this <laughs> thing off? <laughs> All right.
We're yeah. off air. Thanks, guys. Thanks, All right, brother. Man. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm hanging up. Goodbye forever. <laughs> Trent Beretta, ladies and gentlemen. Or Beretta, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah, Beretta. Um, we want to thank you guys for all tuning in and, uh, you know, another episode of Monty and the Pharaoh. We want to thank Beretta for taking his time out with us today. He's certainly going to have a, a bright future for sure. Yeah, he's you, great. You could hear the passion he's got in wrestling. Yeah. What'd you think there, Jim? Bro, I thought he was great. He he's, was great, he's right? Nice guy, really nice guy, too, down to earth. You, yeah. you could, the, the thing that impressed tell. me, like, he really loves he loved his sport. Yeah. 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 He's still a fan. I like to hear that. I love yeah. that. That was fantastic. Not taking advantage of uh, getting the hooking up with the girls, though. That was a little yeah. disappointing. Yeah, I think he's full of shit. Huh? I think he's full of shit. Oh, you think so? He's just lying. His mother's, no, His mother's watching. It. He's a mama's yeah, yeah. boy? He is not. Would you please? Uh, so, bro, listen. I, did, I just had to throw something in, bro. Go it up. I heard a rumor not too long ago that people thought we were getting out of the wrestling scene here. What? And it seems like we've gotten so entrenched in it. Like, we are ha, Long ha. Island's home of wrestling we are long island's home of wrestling in fact now that you just bring it up yeah september 23rd from uh seven to eight o'clock we've got the genius and we'll call him the genius right there's other names he went by the genius lanny poffo uh former we'll not call him a manager because he wasn't a manager but co partner of mr perfect kurt henning and obviously the brother of Randy Macho Man Macho Savage. Man. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Let me ask you this. What's he going to bring with him? He's bringing his Hall of Fame ring. So from 7 to 8, if you come down to the studio, you'll get a picture. Wait, wait. He's on your finger. his brother's he's, Hall yes, of Fame ring. Yes. Which is his. Right. It's his, now. It's his now. But he makes sure everybody knows this yeah. is my brother's Hall of Fame but ring. He, and he's going to let you put it on your own finger. And you get to put it on your own finger. Or maybe finger. two of your fingers yeah. if you're... You yeah, and, probably. And, and he'll yeah, be in probably. studio for a live interview with Monty and Afaro from 8, uh, 8, 8.05 till about 9.15 if we go along. Um, it's going to be a great interview. Uh, Lanny Poffo has got a lot to say, man. And he's got a lot of history in this business. And he won't hold back. Um, and then on the... <clears throat> Hello, Monty. That's right. On the 26th, we've got Val Venus' studio from 3 to 5. Oh, He'll be on Monty and Afaro live uh, interview from 3 to 3.45 on a special episode of Monty and Afaro. Again, Val Venus, one of the huge stars. Dude, Savelli, this is, you Please. are. This is the home of Jimbo. pro wrestling. And the home. In between the 23rd and the 26th, Monty and Afaro, representing Village Connection, will be in Atlantic City. Oh. Uh for Boardwalk Beatdown. Come on down, Bertha. And we have our own table. <laughs> Wait, yeah, Bertha <laughs> boy, come on down, brother. Oh, fuck. Come on down. You don't even have to drive that far. Oh, please. Um, please. We'll, be, we'll have our own table there oh. and uh, much support for uh, Captain's Corner, who will also be promoting there along with um, J&R Collectibles. J&R Collectibles. So, Joe, yeah, Joe. it's another exciting month. Uh and you know non-stop. this village, it is nonstop, non-stop and I got to really again. That's not thank, to mention the uh, thirty plus shows we have. Oh my God, please! You know whatever. Some it's people like, talk and some people. Monty do. and the Pharaoh come and they all follow, follow the Pharaoh. You know, that sounds familiar. I think you said that on our first. Dude, show. you know before we go, show, before we though, I I could you that. not kiss that guy's ass more than you did? I love Beretta, and I'm not going to apologize. I don't think there's anyone you don't love. What are you talking about? The 23rd is There's like, I guys. love the genius. You want to see me uh, not like somebody? Bring Titus O'Neil on his show. Then you'll see me not like somebody. Why don't okay? you like Titus O'Neil? He's running his mouth about Hogan. So watch me say stuff to got him. The, you know, we got to shut this down. So it's like getting what? out of control already. Get out of control. Yes. No, but I want to they thank. They censor me the moment I feel free. What the? F- you I got it. To. Unbelievable. To. Go ahead, Mike. No, go ahead. I'm done. I'm cool. You sure? I, you know, I'm not, but go ahead. Next week, you could expect uh, a couple of clips from uh, former uh, former indie uh, Perth Amboy indie wrestler, Butch, Butcher Blackwell. Uh, we actually have a video from him, and we'll be taking clips from it and yes. possibly showing it on our show. Classic. Yes. He had a few things to say about us. Oh, um, it's pretty, ama- pretty amazing. A few things. Um, yeah. Former, yeah. former, uh, former part of the Blackwell family. Um, Smasher? <laughs> Smasher Blackwell. Smash Black? Anyway, we want to thank Beretta for coming on. Uh, great interview. Thank you so much for taking the time with us. Uh, when you come down and come to town, and nice guy, really nice great. guy. 
Great. I'm stuttering for words right now. Yeah, anyway, so you want to send us out, Farrell? Well, we want to thank you for tuning in. We want to thank you for catching our show with Beretta and all our future shows. Mm. To our fans, you are the best. Michael one has one no last life. thing, and I don't really want to forget this. Bill Pierce, good friend of the show. Yes. Bill Pierce. Right? Yeah. Everybody knows yeah. who Bill Pierce yeah. is. Yeah. What was Bill Pierce, a.k.a.? Chris Sir, Rich, Sir Chris Michaels. Sir Chris Michaels. Well, Richard. anyway, he's laying claim to, uh, and good friend of Butcher Blackwell, by the oh. way. Okay. Just in oh. case you all didn't know that. Okay. Um, he lays claim to help building the ECW arena, so congratulations on that, Bill. That's awesome. Wow. He's con- he's a construction guy. He's built like a construction guy. Yeah, yeah. He's, a big he's built. Yeah. He could anyway. probably get Butcher to help him a little bit. Doubt it. You think Butcher could help? He can't even walk. <laughs> wow. Ouch. There's another video coming now. Yeah. That's awfully mean, Jim. He, right. could, he, can yeah. he can walk. for us. He can walk. He can walk. He can walk. Hey, where, hey listen, how far is Perth Amboy from Atlantic City? It's a hop, skip, and a jump. <laughs> or a walk. <laughs> well, I'll be there. Uh, I'll, bells be, on. I'll be there, and we will have a table I'm at Board it. One Beef Town. I'm, so uh, I think I'm, that's what it's called. I'm bringing my train to Tack Cat, so come, come on. I will be there live, so, you know, hey, yeah. well, you know. Yeah. Are you going to have, sl- yeah. have a sandwich with you? I'll have a sandwich. Cool. He'll be yeah, there. I'm out, a sandwich. Check out this work. I'll bring, I'll bring the butcher belt. <laughs> It's supplied with juice, um, sandwiches. Ah, ah, Listen, I just want to go out on a limb and say this. Go ahead. Go on a limb. We will never bother the butcher again You're right. if he gives us the DNA test to prove he's a Blackwell. You know what? That's a great idea. Yeah, if he does that, we will never bother him again. Better yet, can I go? I want to make it much easier than this because DNA tests cost a lot of money, yeah. Yeah. and it would be unfair to ask for something 30, like that. 23 plus that's me. even too much, Jim. I understand that's what you want to do. It's too much money. Right. Just produce a picture with you and Jerry Blackwell. Yeah, yeah. One picture. Well, we could do a GoFundMe to collect the money for the <laughs> no. DNA test. No, I don't want it. Listen, I don't. I don't want it. I don't oh, want. Oh, wow. Now. We got oh, vicious, oh, Jim, today. Woo! Cool. Listen, I'm on medication. Dude, I got to I got to tell you, that also would be another great idea, but yes. all I want is one picture yes. with one. you and Jerry Blackwell. One. one. Or or any member of his family within a picture with him. Anything. Anything. Any member Anything. of any family. Anything. You and side. I like herbs. In fact, you know what? I got even better. I got it. You know, because we know yeah. Butcher likes to collect things, right? He's a yeah. big collector. He takes a lot of everything. pictures. Remember, he had the whole bedload of stuff. Absolutely. So how about this? I'll even go one better. I'll make it even easier. Oh, Just produce a picture with you with Larry Sharp. How's that? Oh, God. How hard could that this be? Can't be hard. One picture with Larry Sharp. Oh. Faro? Yeah, well, you know, let's see it. Listen, Let's see it. I know what I'm doing at 3 a.m. What, what are you doing at 3 a.m.? I'm going to watch Butch's video that he puts out tonight. <laughs> you are funny today, dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> Everybody loves that video. It's like watching a car crash. Listen, anyway. It's great. I, I oh think that God. he called my station something, so I have a right to say whatever he I want. He called you C. What? C. H. Fuck you. That's. Head. Please. Oh, we'll send you the video. Oh you've been out of town. We got train All right, tell me. So you've been out of town. Let me give you. Can I give him a five yeah. minute, two minute recap? You got it. Okay, Monty and the Pharaoh. By the way, we welcome start. back, Pete. We love you. you. There you go. Hold on. So we come back. To, we come to Village Connection Radio. We meet. That's where we first meet. Right. The show starts to explode. I was here. Oh, right? Yeah. Okay. And we bring in uh, Marty Janetti for right. a meet and greet, yeah. along with the uh, Perth Amboy in independent legend Butcher Blackwell and uh, yeah. Bill Pierce, a.k.a. Right. Sir Richard Michaels. ECW. Former ECW, ECW real talent, right? Okay. We have a sign in, uh, a sign, and uh, things get a little out of control. I don't need to repeat it. The history yeah, is yeah, there. Yeah, no, no, it gets no. a little out of control. We'll tell you afterwards. Yeah, yeah. And, uh. <laughs> oh. Jim, you all right? You want tissue? Oops. You look, wait a minute. He um, destroyed. Wait a minute. So, basically, shit just starts to hit the fan, right? Okay. There's a lot of. A lot of Things going on you at this event. You wouldn't be where you were today without me. Okay. And then you know okay. it just it just got it just got out of control. Will you hear the time oh, that he beat me yeah. up on studio? No, I missed oh, that yeah. one. He wasn't oh. here for that. No, uh, no he missed that one. That was, uh, he took me down. That was the one yeah, I missed. He took, it took me down on studio. I like 
I oh, fell over the please. table. Tell the truth. He almost killed me. Tell what well, really happened. So anyway, we had a makeup show. Right. And we got like 10,000 views. It was pretty impressive, Which, that's right? The, that's the one I attended. So yeah, yeah so he took that's a lot of credit for I that. Think. He took credit for the 10,000 sh- you know, views. Wait, the hard work of the station? I don't know. What the fuck Whatever. is going on there? Captain Delusional. But anyway, it's it seems, it seems, it seems that some people are taking offense to... Oh. Some commentary towards yourself. Marty Jannetty and Mr. Blackwell. Oh, and right. Mr. Like Blackwell a piece, a piece instead Mr. of you Mr. Know. Blackwell decided to make a video recently <laughs> that he thought <laughs> none of us would see because we're all blocked, but people like to share stuff with us. And yeah. we and I will tell you the truth, we uh, enjoyed it. I actually we did. saved I'm it. Changing. Oh, we I mean, saved it, we, we saved enjoyed it. it. It's we made copies of it. We got copies. Because weeks ago this would have made me mad. And then I looked at this and I'm like Something's we, happening to me. Changed, this is funny. We've changed the Pharaoh. Okay, well, yeah. also, on a side note, besides <laughs> that, <laughs> there's, other, there's other stations saying they're the wrestling show, they're the fan what? of fans, they're oh, doing well, this, okay, they're doing that. The and guess already. what? The resume's already blown yeah, out of the yeah. water. It's yeah. like, it's, you, it's over. <laughs> I mean, a bunch of wannabes. I'm not going to go through the list. Oh, anyway. God. Want to thank Beretta. Thanks for catching Incredible talent. Ring of Honor superstar. Thank you for taking the time out with Monty and the Pharaoh. Awesome. Uh, awesome. And next week we'll be back, and you will, all those fans, you will get some butcher clips. You will enjoy. It. I am Love telling this. you, it's <laughs> it's wreck. gold. Anyway, can I sign us off? Sure, yeah, sign us off, right, guys. This is uh, Jim Savalli with Monty and the Pharaoh and our friend Peter. Yes, from uh, Crackhead Radio Station awesome. and. CHS. Like to wish everyone a good night. Smoke it if you got it. <laughs> I don't do drugs. No, you don't. That works.